Welcome everyone to 7 Minutes or Less, talking about the shows you love and want to get into. Today we will be talking about Stranger Things Season 3. And I do apologize for this late review, it has been a very busy week and it's probably not even necessary to review this show anymore, but... I have things I'd like to say. I'd like to share my thoughts with you. So if you would like, please give this a like and also subscribe if you so choose. And give me a comment. Let me know what you think of Stranger Things Season 3. I'd love to engage with you. First things first, though. I will not be giving spoilers for this third season. But watch out for the comments. You never know what's going to be there. But I will talk about the first two seasons briefly. And there will be a dash of spoilers there. So look out for that. But it's not going to be much. So here's the deal. I have reviewed the first two seasons on my channel. Check out those if you're interested. It's in the description box ready for you. But here is a brief sum up of how I felt about the first two seasons. I liked season one fine. It was alright. Until I saw it again and I found it probably the best crafted season of 80s nostalgia with an original story that didn't feel like it ripped off anything for me. So I ended up loving it. Season 2 expanded the world and gave a real consequence to the first story. But I had issues with it. While I love Sean Astin, I couldn't find his character Bob all that great considering the advice he ends up giving Will nearly kills him unintentionally and then his character is killed off and then I didn't feel a thing for him. It was sad because had they killed him off in Season 3, I may have found his character a little bit more deemed worthy of such an impact, but there was nothing here since he was just introduced and then killed off in the same season. So in the end, I enjoyed season two fine, but I found the new characters sort of pointless until they found some use by the end of its season. I didn't mind the subplot of these new superpower beings, but that entire episode dedicated to Eleven and this newfound posse was a bit like filler for me. But I won't lie to you, I just really wish they expanded on that. So here we are to season three. Hearing the responses for this season have been pretty decent considering everyone felt it was a step up from season two, which to me, I think is fine. Not exactly what I would say because I do like to compare my seasons on how better or worse they are, but I never had a problem with some of the direction season two took. So I basically look at Stranger Things as a yet another expansion on the world established, which I thought maybe the season was going to just tie up loose ends. And in a way, they are. But they're also expanding it as well. The expansion of a world always fascinated me. The story elements being told were pretty much telling you that there was more to the story. You just didn't know it yet. So I go in with an open mind, but I always fear once the cohesive story that we know is present and accounted for, another season becomes a known thing, it's on its way, and I begin to wonder as I go through the season, are they grasping at straws? I call these seasons find out as you go types. The plot is unclear because the trailers are unclear and so basically you go along for the ride. It can make for one fine experience but they oftentimes can be one of those seasons that felt like they were truly trying too hard to make a story work and the characters likable. Thankfully the characters will always be likable and the story will always be fascinating, but I guess I could call this season the more grounded from the first two seasons. There is very little upside down set pieces or interesting aspects to explore anymore. Since the gate was closed in season two, this is all about that last bit that was left rearing its ugly head against the small town of Hawkins. Here's where everyone's at. Will tries desperately to get Lucas and Mike from growing out of their nerdy beginning. Eleven and Mike grow together as a couple while Hopper does not like this development at all. Joyce is looking to possibly move for better prospects. Dustin has come back from summer science camp with a newfound girlfriend no one has met yet, so they question this girl's existence. Jonathan and Nancy catch wind of something sinister uprising at Hawkins as they deal with the local paper honchos who do not take. Nancy, seriously. Steve and a co-worker Robin both team up together when they hear a Russian code from Dustin and they try to crack it. And Billy, who is never up to any good, is the beginning to an end that the creatures of the Upside Down have planned for the small town of Hawkins, to which Will senses the Mind Flayer is coming. So as you can see, a grand majority of the cast returns despite a few losses in season two, and the subplot of the lost girl and her team have been pretty much neglected. I kinda wish they didn't do that, but hey, they listened to the fans and ditched 
it. Either way, we have a third season, and as I said before, this is a lot more grounded than the last two. The stakes are higher for our heroes as death becomes a prime looming concept. Change and how much one is willing to hold on to it before what you love is gone forever is another element too. It gives us great conflict and desires within each character. Hopper is a lot more angrier in this season, where he is always outside of his comfort zone, so it was interesting to see how his character was pushed, doubted, and chastised, only to find out that he was right about certain things, had to learn how to deal with others, and had a real down-to-earth aspect in all that was going on. I'd say if I had any issues with the show, it's mostly where all these relationships coming about and having its time to be explored and expand really leads to some questionable downtime. There would be a really intense scene where a group is split up and one half of the group has to save the other half. We just get witty quips about one another and the personalities fly and they just stall to talk. Now, if that's a nitpick, I'd have to say it's an awfully convenient thing to have when banter starts happening after an intense scene as we get to know new characters to old established characters. The ending to the season is a big, what's gonna happen next? And I like the ending, but there's a lot of, what does this mean? But I'm pretty sure it's just there to get you thinking and discussing. But in the end, guys and gals, I really enjoyed this third season of Stranger Things. It was a welcome back. It had a lot of fun telling its story, and I had fun watching it. It's just as good as season two for me, but probably not as good as one. But I do see myself turning back to this season more often if I choose to watch this show on a whim. For that, I'm going to give Stranger Things season three a B+. All right, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my review for Stranger Things Season 3. Let me know down below if you're interested in seeing it or otherwise. If you're new to my channel, check out what I do. I create all sorts of stuff from TV show and movie reviews. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss anything. That's if you want to sub. And if you have any ideas of what you'd like me to review next, please let me know. And I do hope you all have a fantastic and wonderful day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.